Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be counting down our top 10 favorite rides from SeaWorld Orlando. Today we've got all three members of Adventure Barks here with us today. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the, uh, the countdown video, Kenobi? I want to do the intro. And he's like, we didn't prepare me. <laughs> <laughs> right. What was I supposed to say? Oh, then. All right. That's how long it lasts. Neither there you go. <laughs> Today we're going to be counting down our top 10 favorite rides at SeaWorld Orlando. And we were just there a few weeks ago this past March, and what a fantastic park. I mean, uh, look how much fun we're having right here. <laughs> um, so, before we get to the list, um, when we're constructing these lists, we start from number one and uh, work our way backwards, or forwards. I guess. Backwards, I guess. <laughs> we start at our favorite and work our way from there. And um, Around seven. <laughs> around number seven, we ran into some trouble uh, where we realized that uh, SeaWorld has no rides. <laughs> yeah, about seven, honestly, <laughs> that are like, worth talking about. So we're like, okay, so what do we do with this top ten list here? <laughs> and yeah, we got a little creative, but I think we made it work. Yeah, there's 17 rides total here, and like seven or eight of those are... Sesame Street rides designed for uh, little kids. <laughs> so, um, doesn't make them bad. They're just, uh, we're not the target audience. Exactly. Right? So, if uh, you're looking at numbers 10, 9, and 8 on our list and think they're a little odd, uh, it's because they are. They are. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, uh, let's get into it. Um, at number 10, we've got the Flamingo Paddle Boats. Uh, what's not to love? <laughs> they're pink, they're shaped like flamingos, and who doesn't love a good paddle boat? Um, we both, uh, both grew up in the Northeast and around lots of lakes and rivers and stuff, and I know that they're one of my favorite things to do in the summer up here, so why not do them around all the beautiful sights in SeaWorld? Exactly, and uh, yeah, big, big open lake uh, you get to paddle around. Um, they're pink, they're flamingos. You get to see roller coasters when you're paddling around, which is cool. You get to see roller coasters while you paddle mm -hmm. around. I mean, yeah, there's, there's nothing bad to say about them. They're awesome flamingo paddle boats. Maybe not as thrilling as a roller coaster, <laughs> but that's why it's at number 10. And you get a little bit of exercise while you ride them. Mm -hmm. It might not be a great thing necessarily. But... To break up all the exercise you get while walking miles and miles around the park each day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, number nine. We got Super Grover's Boxcar Derby, and um, it, this is a roller coaster. <laughs> uh, it might be the roughest roller coaster in the park, and I'm actually not even joking when I say that. <laughs> yeah, right? If this, if anything's going to hurt you there, it's going to be Grover's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tight fit, it's, uh, it's janky, it's, it's bumpy, but hey, the kids seem to love it, and... Uh, that's what it was intended for, right? So it does its job. <laughs> and we needed a number nine spot. So it we also, also <laughs> it fit into there well, too. We, we needed something at number nine, and uh, yeah, it's a roller coaster. So, so there, there you go. go. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to number eight. We've got the Sky Tower. Um, it's 400 feet in the air. It gives you amazing views of an already beautiful park, and it's a good place to cool down. Not really much to say, good or bad, about this, but I do like taking a break every once in a while and kind of scoping out. Uh, the rest of the park so yeah, absolutely it's uh sea world's tallest ride so that's true it has that going for it and uh nice place to cool off uh on a nice hot summer day now they just got to turn that thing into a drop tower now we're <laughs> yeah turn it into a drop tower and uh, this will shoot up a few spots i guarantee it <laughs> turn it into a drop tower tell no one <laughs> and <then> just <laughs> awesome uh, uh, awesome views from up there best views in the park for sure mm -hmm. Okay, on to the real rides here. <laughs> Number seven, we have Journey to Atlantis, and this thing is just awesome. Uh, I believe it was the first roller coaster at SeaWorld, built there in the late 90s, and that just goes to show you how much this park has changed oh, absolutely. since then. Yeah, um, it's, it's awesome. It's uh, part dark ride, part log flume, part roller coaster. This, this thing has it all, yeah. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, it does it all well. Yeah. Uh, after that first drop, a lot of people think the ride is over, but it's uh, it's just getting started. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> yeah, um, after the, the big drop where you don't really get too wet, there's uh, this little evil dip right afterwards. And if you're in the front row, let's hope you brought a change of clothes because you are getting absolutely soaked. You let your guard down after the big drop thinking everything's fine and dandy. And <laughs> I know that evil deep will get you. Evil. 
evil. It's an evil little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, it turns into a roller coaster, which is my favorite part of the ride. And it's just, yeah, no, it, it does it all. It kind of dries you off when you're going really fast on the coaster, I guess. <laughs> it's like being in a huge dryer. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I need, I need a lot more than that to dry you off. Uh. <laughs> Um, and also, it's uh, SeaWorld's best themed ride, hands it's beautiful down. beautiful inside, yeah. Yeah, just mm -hmm. awesome set pieces in there, great music, just no complaints. Besides that evil dip. <laughs> yeah. And number six, we've got Infinity Falls by Intamin. Now, this is a Rushing Rapids ride, and it will get you absolutely soaked. Um, maybe almost, if not as much as the evil little dip in <laughs> um, Atlantis. Yeah, I'd say this ride is even wetter than uh, Journey to Atlantis. Mm -hmm. This thing does not play around. <laughs> Every single person on it is going to get soaked, too. Yeah, it, it's very tough to escape getting soaked on this one. I, it might be impossible, actually. This thing just it moves way faster than other Rapids rides like it, mm -hmm. uh, way crazier. There's two lift hills, the second one being an elevator lift hill, which is super unique. Uh, I believe when it was built, it was the tallest drop on one of these as well. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this thing is like your rapids ride on steroids. And that, one of the more unique ones I've went on, too, because, yeah, that, that drop is unlike anything I've experienced on most rides of this caliber. And, yeah, you like you said, going to get soaked. Um, I like the rock work. It's very cool. It's kind of like you're going through a cavern. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be, like, way sped up compared to other ones oh, like absolutely. this. Oh, absolutely. You're yeah. just going around and around and around before you can even know which way. Yeah, this is not your standard uh, rapids ride. So, yeah. Uh, be wary. <laughs> you change your clothes. <laughs> you're definitely going to need a change of clothes for this one. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about this ride, but it definitely draws the biggest line on SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, mid-afternoon on a nice day, this is going to be over an hour wait. Like, surely. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of, like, maybe family-centric stuff there. It's either thrilling or kiddie, and I think this kind of, like, meets in the middle. Yeah, so. as we discussed earlier, very heavy on thrill coasters here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the Sesame Street rides. There are not a lot of uh, mid-level family rides here, unfortunately. Um, they are building the all-new Penguin Trek, which should suit that. So mm -hmm. that, that's a much-needed roller coaster, a nice family roller coaster mm -hmm. for sure. And may reduce the times you're going to see on this, too, because, I don't know. But we were there in the middle of the afternoon and got up to almost two hours, I think. Yeah, 90 minutes plus for mm -hmm. sure, yeah. So, yeah, uh, they definitely need more uh, mid-level thrill yeah. rides for... Rides for everybody. That the entire family could get on for sure to uh, spread out the lines a bit, spread the crowds out. Yeah, agreed. All right, made it to the halfway point. Number five, we have Icebreaker. And uh, spoiler alert, they're all going to be roller coasters from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a Premier Rides multi-launch coaster. And it's a, it's a punchy little thing. Um, it starts off with a backwards launch and a forwards launch and a backwards launch and then a forwards launch again, making it like, it's a pretty lengthy ride. Um, and then after that, it gets over the top hat and you get pretty good ejector airtime on a lot of these hills. Um, I, I, I genuinely, I love this thing. Oh, I do too. And um, thank God they removed these, the comfort collars that they oh, had. Oh, right. That's and the best they, part about it, yeah. Wow. Changed the ride ultimately for me. Definitely bumped it up higher on this list. If they had the comfort collar still, then no, it would be lower. Yeah, you can actually experience that awesome airtime you're getting now instead of just being like brought back down with these annoying comfort collars. <laughs> yeah. Ride ruining collars is what they are. Yeah, uh, Premier, you got you got to stop putting it, those on any roller coaster moving forward. <laughs> Lap bars, baby. Lap All bars only. <laughs> um, you can do that. Yep. And I guess if you can call it a con, uh, we say it has an identity crisis. Is this a family ride? Is it a thrill ride? It seems like it's something in between and that may be hard for some families to decide whether or not it's right for them. We saw some young kids there, and I was kind of thinking, like, this might be too intense for them. But to each their own, it's just you look at it, and you don't know what you're getting into. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you are not, you don't know that you're going to be getting ejector airtime like that going on to the chase, ride. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, it, it can be pretty intense. So mm -hmm. I think they tried to design this as a family coaster. It uh, didn't really work out so well. And uh, now they're trying again. <laughs> and it seems like they're going to they're gonna get it right this time with Penguin Trek. <laughs> I think so, if penguins are any hint. <laughs> Coming in at number four on our list, we've got Kraken. Manta. We talked about this. Yeah, we did talk about this. <laughs> <At length>. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> 
So uh, we can usually come to some sort of agreement when we make these lists. Uh, I'm not budging on this one. Not not in this case, though. Apparently, <laughs> uh, I've got I've got Kraken as the uh, number four roller coaster on this list because it should be. Because it should. All right. Well, let's discuss. Kraken first, the actual number four roller coaster. Whatever, this is, he thinks he's winning, he's not. We all know. <laughs> so Kraken, the fourth best roller coaster at this park, mm -hmm. is a uh, b and floorless, uh, built back in 2000. And this is definitely the most intense roller coaster at SeaWorld. Um, seven inversions, super high on the positive Gs, it just does not let up. And the, uh, the mid-course brake run doesn't really too, hit too hard, so it's, it's pretty aggressive throughout. I have such a special place in my heart for this coaster though. This really is my first big girl coaster. Um, my home park was Great Escape growing up before it was even a Six Flags. So my thrill coasters really were kind of non-existent. And when I was 10 years old, this was my first big girl coaster and it blew my mind. I was like, this is what coasters are. <laughs> I, I've been missing out. Yeah, coming from the Great Escape. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, no hate, but maybe a little bit. You have to comment. Yeah, we have the comment. That is fun, but this, come on, I'm sorry. You can't compare the wooden comet to the Kraken. So you're a little bit biased. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Every man, the list can be biased. It's part of it, right? Is I guess each their own, right? Nostalgia and how I feel about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, overall, this is just a great ride. Um, nothing really bad to say about it, except for it may be starting to show its age a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, when we when we got on, I noticed a bit of a rattle, which was not there a few years ago. Even so. in the front, we were in the front too. Even in the front row, yeah. So probably even a little bumpier in the back. So uh, hopefully they can um, sort that out. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that amazing green paint job. I know Lorenzo loves to hear <laughs> how I love to see beautiful colors against the blue sky. And I'm sorry, look at this thing. Hey, that's my favorite color. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not complaining about the green job. Love it. Green paint job all day. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you can you can start number three. I guess for these <laughs> getting his way, even though I'm not thrilled about it. And number three and or four, depending on who you ask. This this was clearly our toughest decision here on this list, it and was. they are both so close to each other. Yeah, on any day they can. And they're so flop. good, and I'm yeah. sure it does flip flop. It, it might depend on the day for me. They're both fantastic B and M's mm -hmm. here at B and M World. B and M World. See, Russell just changed their name. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we've got Manta, which is a B&M flying coaster. It is one of the most beautiful coasters in the world. I think it's probably the most beautiful coaster I've ever seen. And so pic pic picturesque. It is picturesque. picturesque. Photographic. Photogenic. Picture perfect. Picture perfect. Picture, picture stupendous. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I that's what I was going to say. <laughs> um, it, 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 it takes good pictures. It, it looks real good, yeah. It's um, pretty. It is pretty. And I mean, the line for it is an aquarium. Like, there really isn't a ton of bad to say about this. I love waiting in line and walking through and seeing sharks and mantas and all sorts of fish. And it's like an enclosed cave. It's very neat. Yeah, if you're going to make us wait, give us cool things to look at. And mm -hmm. uh, this hits the spot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't really feel like you're waiting when you're in there. <laughs> but yeah, no, just fantastic coaster. The pretzel loop is just insane. Mm -hmm. Just the most insane element in that entire park, for sure. Uh, not the most intense coaster, but that's the most intense element in the park, for sure. And I think with other um, coasters where, like, you're flying, <clears throat> this has more thoughtful elements, whereas, I don't know, like, Superman just kind of feels like it's it's thrown together. Although Superman clones, yeah, after the pretzel loop, it, it, the, the ride is over. It's a one trick pony. They just start meandering. This ride continues, mm -hmm. and very floaty through the inversions. There's a, you got a corkscrew, two inline twists, you, know, you dip through, like, caverns and waterfalls, yeah, and it's, it's, cool. it's just awesome, yeah. Uses the landscape well. Sure it does. I guess our one bad thing to say about this is it seems to break down a lot at the end of the ride specifically. I think the two times we've ridden it, we've gotten stuck at the end. The last two times. Laying down with just, our butts in the air. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> hanging in that flying position for uh, five, ten minutes when it's 100 degrees out. Not fun. <laughs> and awkward a little. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not, it's not a fun position to be in. Uh, flattering. Yeah, there's, we just get unlucky <laughs> on the brake run on this thing for some reason. But I'll take it. But it's still a great ride. <laughs> Definitely still worth the ride. Alrighty, moving on to number two. This is SeaWorld's newest coaster and a very unique one, Pipeline, the surf coaster. And I fell in love with this thing. Uh, great launch. 
airtime while standing up is a feeling that I've never experienced, and it is just, it absolutely blew my mind. I, I knew it was coming, but not like this. Oh yeah, no, there's no way to really mentally prepare for it, and I think they finally took the standing up seat technology and nailed it. I have, we both have ridden others previously, and it just feels like something's missing the mark. It's uncomfortable, it's kind of shaky and weird. This is smooth, and... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, BNM really figured it out with their stand-up coasters. This mm -hmm. thing is not uncomfortable like all their previous ones. It's just, it's a completely different ride. Mm -hmm. uh, just You're in the air a long time. So smooth. Oh, yeah, on those airtime hills, you're just getting lifted up for three, four seconds at a time, especially that first airtime hill. Like, I was shocked, like, in the best way possible. Yeah, it really feels like you are flying. Yeah, great stuff. Um, and being a prototype... This model can really go far, I think. I think they can add elements to these things to just make them some of the best coasters in the world. I'm excited to see what will come from this. Exactly, yeah. Oh, and you're riding on a friggin' surfboard. It's right. cooler than that. <laughs> Pretty sweet theming on this one. <laughs> and Kayla, you can take the top spot, because we know. We all fun. know. Come on. You want... You played this video knowing what number one was going to be. It's your favorite shark, I'll let you take it. It is my favorite shark, and it should after that whole uh, Kraken debacle in number three, four. But number <laughs> one, of course, Mako, a B&M Hyper. I think my favorite. And this ride is unreal. The drop, fantastic. The airtime, fantastic. The color, beautiful. And <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, it is my favorite shark also. Um, I think like most of us, when third, fourth grade, you kind of pick your favorite shark and you stick with it. Oh, absolutely. Picked a good one. And, <laughs> you did, yeah. You know, and they made a roller coaster about it, just to prove my point. A pretty epic <laughs> roller coaster. Absolutely. Yeah, this thing is glass smooth from start to finish. Um, the first Camelback Hill after the drop is unbelievable sustained floater airtime for like four seconds. It, it might be my, my favorite hill on any B&M hyper coaster ever. And as it, it can be intense, it, I'm not going to say it's overly intense. It just has tons of rewritability because it is so smooth. You can marathon this thing. and eh, that's Yeah, because it's so glass smooth. I mean, it's, it's the tallest coaster there. It's the fastest coaster there. But you can ride this thing all day all because, day. yeah, it's not going to give you a headache at all. No rattle, just pure bliss. <laughs> pure bliss on Mako from start to finish. Well, actually, uh, the mid-course does kill it a little bit. <laughs> And it's the one reason why this isn't my favorite B&M Hyper Coaster. Um, Goliath takes the cake there for me because it doesn't have that mid-course break run and is mm -hmm. relentless from start to finish. It can meander a little bit at the end. Um, and I th yeah. think that Still that does fun, happen though. with a yeah. lot of the Hypers, but you're right, Goliath doesn't really do that. But This is much smoother than Goliath, though. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. Goliath does have its rattle. And it's prettier. And I know that it shouldn't count for everything, but it should count for something. It's prettier. The setting is nicer over the mm -hmm. lake. Yeah, no, this is... Yep. Such a great roller coaster, okay. obviously being number one in yep, SeaWorld. Exactly. That's not an easy task. <laughs> but uh, somebody's got to take it. Okay. That's Mako. Indeed. So we know that um, Penguin Trek is coming out maybe even in the next couple weeks or so. So that will change the layout of this list. are not exactly sure where it may fall for us, but we'll eventually get on it and see. Um, L looking at the bottom of our list, uh, <laughs> it's pretty safe to say that yeah. uh, Penguin Check is probably going to make this list once we are able to ride it for sure. <laughs> those poor flamingos are going to get knocked off. Uh, those poor, poor flamingos. We might have to switch that in Grover's, actually. I don't know if we can lose the, the uh, flamingos off the list. I don't want to lose the flamingos. I'd rather ride the flamingo paddle boats now than Grover's if I had to choose. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Coming for you, Grover. Yeah, we're going to have to take a long, long hard look at this list. <laughs> Reassess. Uh, so yeah, if uh, you agree with our picks, if you didn't, uh, let us know. Uh, tell us why Kraken is the uh, fourth best ride at this park. and uh... <laughs> Or why Make Manta isn't three. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>